Heaven visit. The unrepentant will see the new Jerusalem before they are cast to hell. Welcome, beloved. I was serving the Lord in the church as always. Then one day I was invited by my leader to attend a prayer campaign in our church. And I joined him on that day of prayer campaign. When it was night, I got myself ready and I joined the brothers and sisters in prayer. We were in a three-night vigil to watch and pray. Moments of prayer in God's presence are good times, even though prayer is a sacrifice. People of God should have a lifestyle of sacrifice. Nowadays, God's people want to get things from the Lord instantly. They want miracles instantly and they even want the anointing instantly without sacrifice. Yet the Lord wants His people to spend times before Him and persevere and seek His face. God's things have to be looked for. He said, You shall seek me and you shall find me if you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13 It is written that He lives in the midst of praises. Psalm 22, 3. In my heart there was sadness because many members of our congregation did not come to the three nights of watching and prayer. They prefer to relax at home, instead of spending time together with the saints in the presence of the Lord. Yet when we gather in prayer, it is a great moment when the Lord comes down and things change in people's lives. Often the Lord sought out people's problems. Times of prayer are moments of victory because you do not know what God will do for God comes down to touch lives. I was with brothers and sisters in those moments of night prayer vigils crying and seeking God. As we continued to pray, suddenly I felt a wind blowing and coming down and I began to feel the touch and the affection of the Holy Spirit. I began to feel His power. At that moment I heard the voice of the Lord speaking to me. The Lord said, My servant, prepare yourself. I am going to take you with me. You will lay down and stretch yourself on the chair in the front because I will get you today. When I heard the voice of the Lord, I got ahead and I told the brothers about it. I said, the Lord just told me he is going to take me to heaven. I will have to lay on the chair and the Lord will rapture my spirit. People were confused and in fear, they thought I will die. And they were wondering whether I will come back to my body. And they thought I may never come back. Some of them began to cry for they knew me for more than 15 years and they really did not want this to happen. Then I went to the chair that was indicated by the Lord and I stretched myself. Some of God's people laid their hands on me. I was semi-conscious, but when I fell, nothing happened. I said, Lord, I have done what you have asked and you know that these people are looking at what's going to happen. Immediately I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Have peace. And when I heard the Lord said, Have peace, I felt that peace had entered into me as I was laying there. At that moment, I was already crossing the border between our world and the unseen dimension. I began to see reality that is beyond our realm of existence. When I said to the people of God, to look at what I was seeing, I thought I was seeing these things with the eyes of the flesh. But that was not the case for my physical vision was already closed when I laid there, and my spiritual vision was already opened, and I could see the brothers who were there with the eyes of the soul. And when I looked up to the sky, immediately I saw the majestic throne of God. He was seated on His glorious throne and two powerful and radiant angels were standing by His side. The Lord on His throne was watching me, and He was smiling. And at that moment, I wanted to approach His throne. He smiled and said, My servant, come up here. When the Lord told me to come up I saw the two radiant angels who were on His side coming to me. And they put their hands on me and held me. And they started to lift me up towards the throne in the presence of the Lord. As we were rising towards the throne of the Lord, we were flying in space, where I was able to see how demonic forces moved under the surface of the earth. In the air, I saw legions of demons from the north to the south, from the east to the west, there were legions of demons flying in space, and they were active on this planet. I was also able to see the brightening angels of the Lord moving on the face of the earth. And when I looked at the world population getting on with their lives in the land with the eyes of the soul, I noticed that I was seeing the people of the earth not in their terrestrial and natural clothes. In fact, I saw that they were dressed spiritually, with unseen garments on their souls. So those who were in poor spiritual condition before God, and those who had not accepted the sacrifice of the Lord, as they were not washed in the blood of the Lamb, they were dressed in clothes that were black. I was also able to see the people walking on the face of the earth who were clothed in white garments that were bright and without blemishes and without wrinkles. I also saw some people who were dressed in white garments. Yet, 
Their robes had small spots, and other people had large spots on their robes. Dear brothers, are you washing your robes and making them white in the blood of the Lamb? Or are you staining them with sin? The Lord sees our spiritual garments which are related to our deeds. The Lord always looks at our spiritual garments whether they are clean and washed in the Lamb's blood or whether it is spotted with sins. Your garment is either clean or spotted with sins. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by its gates. Revelation 22 14 I was climbing the space at a great speed and we passed the moon and soon I saw a big city of resplendent light. There was a huge gate. I saw that this radiant and brightening city of gold had a hall that was glowing and shining with radiant and resplendent glory. There were rays of light that were beaming from this radiant city and that covered the borderland of the city. On the side of the gate of pearl, there were radiant angels who welcomed me and the two angels took me in a room and left me there for a while. Suddenly the door opened and when I went through the door, I saw a corridor, and at the end of the corridor, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne that reflected brightness and glory. He was dressed in a white robe. His hair was radiant, very beautiful. His eyes like a flame of fire, which were penetrating me for his look was transmitting love. And when I saw him in that glory, I did not dare to approach where he was. And then he said, My servant, my daughter, come. When I approached him, he told me to sit on his lap, and I felt like a child in the arms of a loving father and he hugged me. I felt this abounding love in myself. At that moment he started to caress my head with his right hand. At that moment, I felt like all the battle and all suffering and trials that I endured on earth was a faraway past. In other words, I felt that all the disappointment and regret were gone forever. And at that moment, the Lord told me, My servant, you can ask me any question and I will answer you, but I will ask you one question. And if you answer me, then I will answer any of your questions. The way the Lord spoke to me reminded me of Mark 11 27-30 and they come again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking in the temple, there come to him the chief priests, and the scribes, and the elders, twenty-eight and say to him, By what authority do you these things? And who gave you this authority to do these things? Twenty-nine And Jesus answered and said to them, I will also ask of you one question, and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Thirty The baptism of John, was it from heaven, or of men? Answer me. Medina, now answer me, what else should I do for my church that I have not done? What else am I supposed to do for my church that I have not done? When the Lord asked me that question, I did not have an answer. I did not know how to respond. And at the moment, the Lord asked again, tell me what I should do more for my church that I didn't do. Immediately, I noticed when Lord asked me for the second time, out of his eyes came down tears. And for the third time he asked me, what have I not done for my church that I should do? And when the Lord asked that question in tears, I cried in my soul for I felt all my being shattered and I was feeling broken in my heart. Beloved, go and see the eyes of my Lord pouring forth tears for his church and asking me what is it that he has not done for his church? And what is he supposed to do more? Given that I did not have an answer, he told me right away, my servant, one day I left my throne of glory. One day I became a man and I walked across the face of the earth looking for the wounds to save you. See my servant, not only that but when they took me and punished me, I made up my mind to endure the ordeal for men. See, when they pierced my hand right and nailed it as hard as they did, it did hurt, but I accepted it. When they took my left hand to do the same, I did not say an offensive word yet this hurts me. But I have accepted it. When they nailed my feet like a slave, I did not say any foul word yet this hurts me. I was determined to go through all this for the love of my church. It is for love, and I was doing it for love for humanity that had fallen and had to be redeemed. This is why I did it. And not only that, I gave my life on the cross of Calvary for humanity. Did I go through this suffering in vain? The Lord said, Ask me, I'll give you the Holy Spirit and the gift of my spirit. Whenever the church prays for power and anointing, I give it to them. Then the Lord stood up from his throne, and we began to stroll in the holy city, and we continued our conversation. The Lord said, I died on the earth for my church on the cross. This is what I did for humanity. And when I was elevated in heaven, I came to prepare a place for them. This is what I have prepared for my people. 
Look at the city I have built for them. Yet many despise my sacrifice on the cross. Many do not want to live for me and keep my words. Many do not want to do my will. Many do not serve me. Yet after the sacrifice on the cross, I promised my church this city when I said, In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and welcome you into my presence so that you also may be where I am. And I have prepared this city of glory and light for them. What else am I supposed to do for my people? Tell me. There were still tears in his eyes for his church that will not separate from the world to inherit this eternal kingdom of light that he had prepared for them. Beloved, the Lord is crying for your souls for he has died for you on the cross. He has made available for you the power of his Holy Spirit, and he ascended to heaven to construct an eternal city of light for you. But there are tears in his eyes because of your sin and your failure to keep his words and separate from this world. He has promised this golden, transparent and shining city to all his children who will fight and overcome in this battle against sin, the world and the devil. They will inherit the kingdom of light at the end of this battle. But the Lord said, there is so much disobedience in the church. Many call me Lord, but they do not obey me. Many say they love me, but they do not keep my word. As we continued to move in the holy city and the heavenly world of light, I contemplated the arrival of the saints who were entering the pearly gates of heaven. These were the overcomers. They fought the devil, the world and sin and they overcame. They have purified and cleaned their garments and they were found worthy to enter the gate of the city and to walk on the street of gold. I observed the overcomers entering the gate of the city and walking on the transparent and golden street of the eternal city. I looked in wonder and amazement. I then joined the Lord Jesus Christ in the street of transparent gold that was radiating, and I started to walk slowly excited by this world prepared for us. As we continued to walk we passed magnificent and beautiful buildings on my left and right. I was curious to see what was inside these heavenly buildings. I was gazing to see inside the interior of these stupendous buildings. I cannot explain in human words what I saw there. They were things that human words will fail to explain. I noticed that everything was ready but they were empty. The Lord said, all this is for my people. Beloved, you really need to see this kingdom with your own eyes. We kept walking in the beautiful street and soon we came to a perfectly delightful garden and there was a crystal river crossing and from side to side, there was this garden with magnificent flowers blooming for eternity. And there was fragrance around these heavenly flowers which surround the place with aroma. And as we continued to move in the celestial city I saw the praises and worship of God's people moving in the air towards the majestic throne of the Heavenly Father. Even songs of praise and worship are visible in this land of glory. As we kept moving in this kingdom, to my surprise, I saw my dad who had died some time ago. When I saw my dad, he was a lot younger and radiant. He was rejuvenated and full of youth. I saw that he was talking to two people who were also glorious. When he joined us, he began to speak to the Lord. When he finished I found myself face to face with him. He was in the company of two saints of heaven that were glorious. I did not know who they were. And when he saw me, he smiled with happiness and said, Elisu, what are you doing here? I said, the Lord has granted me to visit his kingdom. Immediately I saw my daddy who was overflowing with the happiness of heaven introducing the two saints of heaven who were in his company. He said, this is the apostle Peter and this is the apostle John. They are talking to me about the arrangement of the rapture of the church that is to happen soon. I saluted the two apostles in a salutation of heaven and they left without many conversations. After that short talk with my father, I was joined by the Lord and we continued walking towards the tremendous and majestic wall of the city. And there was a beautiful gate of pearl that was immense with lightning. The wall was made of jasper and the city itself of beautiful gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were adorned with every kind of precious stone. I felt a strong presence and majesty around there. The Lord who came back talked to me about my meeting with his disciples John and Peter. He said, Did you see your father? I replied, Of course. Beloved brothers and sisters, I appeal to you who are strangers and foreigners on the earth, this glorious and holy city with its fragrant aroma is available for you. It is up to you to resolve to inherit this eternal and incorruptible place. The city of light is for everyone who is willing and resolute. 
It is a city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. When I arrived in the presence of the Lord, I saw that the angels of the Lord were busy rushing. The angels ran from one side to the other in a hurry and great speed. The Lord asked, Do you know why my angels are in a hurry? It's because time is short. How many of my people believed my word when I warned that time is short? Jesus said, They do not understand when I say the time is short. For very soon I'll come and get my bride and bring her in this holy city of light, for everything is ready. The one who is faithful and who does my will and those who live in my words will come here and will be with me. Jesus said, My people do not recognize the time, the period, and the generation they are living. They do not understand and read the times. Between them, there are many disputes. Between them are many lawsuits. There are many conflicts between them. There are many hidden sins in their lives and they are living in sin and distraction. I want to tell you something be holy, for I am holy, and only those who live a holy life in front of my presence will end up walking on the beautiful street of the city where my people are. Yet many who do not keep my words believe that they are worthy of this place. They believe that they are coming to heaven when they die. They call me Lord and they speak my word, but they do not keep my word and they do not do my will. They are not pleasing me and they are in poor condition before me, but they think they are holy. But I am coming soon and they will see what becomes of them. When I speak to them, they do not recognize my voice. There is so much disobedience in my people. When I send the message of warning to them about disobedience, they talk and say to themselves that the message is not for them but it's for someone else for they are not bad. Let me tell you something. They strive with my spirit forever that is trying to convict them of their sins. Men are contesting with my spirit despite covenant after covenant, but I am holy. The Lord said, My daughter, you are living a holy life before my presence, but there are many who live a hypocritical life. In front of me, they are scandalizing the gospel, they are treading my grace under their feet. They must repent before crossing the line of grace to judgment. How many will go to heaven? My spirit is trying to convict men of their sins, but I will not always contend with them. My church does not recognize the time and the generation they are living in and they are blind. But see. And when he said that, immediately, my eyes opened in another environment. I begin to descend into a dark place and there was fear in my heart when I fell in that place. At the moment I saw four angels, but these were not angels from heaven. They were fallen angels and demons. When they approached I saw that they were evil and ugly warriors and soldiers dressed in hellish garments. When I looked in their faces, they transmitted terror in my being. They came as close to where I was, and they told me, If you win this battle for your soul, you spend eternity with your master from above. Behind these demons were the gates of hell. On top of the first gate was an inscription that said, This is hell. There was another door where light was shining and there was beautiful music. And I went through this door of light that shone, for it was illuminated as if there was a light of a bulb. When I entered through the gate, there was a light and I smelt a beautiful scent. I heard a beautiful melody in the air. And when I looked up, I saw the city of New Jerusalem from where the celestial melody originated and peace and fragrant aroma exuded. I was in this place that was a crossroad, where I was told all those who die without repentance are thrown to hell, but they are taken first in the proximity of this city of light so that they can see and contemplate the city of God where there is an aroma of peace, light and the celestial melody. They have to see the city from far as they refused and did not want to believe in the sacrifice of the cross and they shall be cast into hell, so that they may know that God is true and that his word is true. And when they are receiving his punishment, they will not speak against God and accuse him of being unjust because they refused the gospel and rejected Jesus the Son of God. Be blessed.